We are going to talk about direction angles and direction cosines. So let's start with what direction angles are. Definition. The direction angles of a non-zero vector A are the angles alpha, beta, and gamma. And these angles are all in the interval zero to pi. That the vector A makes with the positive x, y, and z axis respectively. So the direction angles are these three angles, alpha, beta, and gamma. And let me try to show you in a picture what, where these angles actually are. So here's my three-dimensional system. This is x, this is y, and this is z. So I have some sort of vector A coming out the origin. So here's my vector maybe. Here's the vector A. And then the angle alpha goes from the positive x-axis up to your angle, up to your vector A. So here's alpha. The angle between the positive y-axis and the vector A would be beta. And finally the angle between the z-axis, positive z-axis, and the vector a, that would be the angle gamma. So there's our three angles. And now we can also define direction cosines, and it's just the cosines of these angles. Direction angles are called the direction cosines of the vector A. So let's say I have a vector A and it's a vector in space, so Let's just give it component form A1, A2, A3. And then I'm looking for the angle between A and the positive x-axis. So I'm looking for the angle between A and the vector I. And we have a nice formula for how to find that. Cosine of alpha would be the dot product of my two vectors over the magnitude of A and the magnitude of I. And if you take the dot product of A with I, you would get A1 over the magnitude of the vector A. And you can do something similar for the angle beta the only difference is you'll use the vector j instead. And then for gamma, you would use the vector k. So I'm just going to say similarly, cosine of beta would be a2 over the magnitude of a. And cosine of gamma would be a3 over the magnitude of the vector a. So there are a couple things I want to mention here. 
So note. So the first one is that if I square cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared beta plus cosine squared gamma, this would be one. You can verify that using these three formulas right here. I'm not going to do that. And then the second thing I want to mention here is for this vector A, which again has component form A1, A2, A3. If you take those three equations and you solve for A1, A2, and A3, you would get that this is the magnitude of A cosine gamma alpha, the magnitude of A cosine beta, and then A3 would be the magnitude of A cosine gamma. And then if I notice here, these terms all have the magnitude of A in them or length of A, so I can factor that out, the length of A cosine alpha, cosine beta, and cosine gamma. So we can then take this. If I divide by the magnitude of A, I'm going to get A over the magnitude of A. It's cosine alpha, cosine beta, cosine gamma. If you remember, when you take a vector and divide by the magnitude, you get a unit vector in that same direction. So, and so this vector right here with our um, direction cosines, this is a unit vector in the direction of A. So this gives us another way to find a unit vector in the direction of A.